Okay, here's 12.1, introducing quantum theory. So this is the beginning of chapter 12. We're done with relativity. We're on to quantum, which th is the other big modern physics theory that, um, that we need to learn about. So you might know bits and pieces about quantum. I know we've talked about it a bit in class. So here's a few of the intro ideas. First off, the name quantum theory. Well, it has quantum in there. And you might have lots of ideas about what quantum means. It's actually not nearly as complicated as it might sound. Quantum, one quantum is just the smallest, the smallest amount of energy that a particle can emit or absorb. And the plural of quantum is quanta. You could say that something has five quanta of energy, that sort of thing. So that's what quantum means. And the whole name for quantum theory comes out of that idea that um, some physicists proposed that instead of electrons or photons or these sorts of things, instead of them being able to carry any amount of charge, any amount of, um, of energy, the theory is that they can only transmit certain types of energy, certain amounts. So that instead of being able to transfer anywhere on the spectrum, it's sort of binned. And it says that, okay, when a photon hits an electron, it can only give it up give up this much energy or a multiple of that much energy. There's sort of a minimum size of energy that, that needs to be worked with. And that's one quantum. And it turns out that that actually uh, explains a lot of very strange behavior that we see at the low level. Now, quantum theory has expanded to mean a lot more than that, but that's, that's where it started. So quantum theory says that energy, all energy, is governed by these quanta. Which is the amount by which they can be transferred. Also, and this is maybe what you're more familiar with, energy can behave as either particles either particles or waves. Okay. So remember our double slit experiment from the last, uh, last unit when we were looking at light and waves? Remember the double slit experiment. from unit 4. So in that experiment we learned how waves behave. We said that a wave travels through its medium and it arrives at both slits simultaneously. So it arrives at both slits at the same time, simultaneously. Each slit acts like a new source. and the two sources interfere. Oops. And the two sources interfere. Creating bands of interference on the screen.
Now I'll apologize right now for the amount of writing in this lesson, but it's just an intro to the ideas. I want us to be able to talk about what's happening here. So, that's what happened with our waves. The waves arrive at both slits. Each slit is a new source for waves. They emit from those two sources. Those two sources interfere in constructive and destructive ways, creating our interference patterns on the screen that's positioned some distance away. That's how our light worked, and it made sense, because we just said that those are waves. Now, let's talk about how particles would behave in the exact same situation. We have a couple pictures below that might help with this. There's our picture for waves, and we were talking about light as an example. So you can see that our light comes through. Each of these um, acts as a new source of waves, like this, and they create little interference patterns here with low and high values. Okay, so what would happen if we instead threw a bunch of tennis balls at those two slits? That's what's pictured in the second picture here. You can see that we're throwing all the tennis balls here, and if a tennis ball manages to get through, like this one, they all just end up going straight this way, and there shouldn't be anything any of these interference patterns on the screen. It should just pile up right here and right here, right underneath the two holes. That's what would make sense. So if we talk about how particles behave, I'll write that out. If, if you get it, I mean, you can just skip ahead. But I'll write out what we were just talking about here. Imagine tennis balls. each one goes through one slit, the other, or neither. Or neither. And if it's neither, it's because it's blocked by the, ba by the barrier. They go through they go through the slit and hit the screen. And there should be no interference pattern. And that should be the big difference. If, if these particles are behaving as particles, then they should just pile up right underneath the openings and not have any interference pattern. Now, we've looked at waves, we've looked at particles, that's how they should operate. Our last thing uh, here is what electrons do. Well, you could probably guess one way or another what electrons do. What happens is, if we fire electrons, electrons are fired one at a time. Okay, so I take my pile of electrons and I fire just one electron at this screen. That's it. Only one right now. I fire it at my screen and I see what happens. I just look at where on the screen it appears. Well, that's what this picture above is here. If you look at this picture here, you can see that we have this experiment. So in case one, we've fired one electron at a time so that a total of 20 have hit our screen. And you can see that there's sort of random dots along our screen for our 20 dots. And if we keep on doing that, if we get up to 100 times, well, it looks something like this. 300 looks something like this. And you can see that it's really building up in this way where we have a lot of results here, and less and less, and then a lot again, and less and less, and a lot, and less and less. And it's creating our interference pattern, even though each one of these electrons was fired one at a time, and we're just seeing how they pile up at the end. They end up creating this same pattern with high and low probabilities of where they end up. So, electrons are fired one at a time, and they're fired as particles. 
because it needs to be a particle if we're just firing one electron. That's a, a single particle. But they create interference patterns. So what mean what that means is that each electron each electron goes through both slits and interferes with itself. I'll put an exclamation mark there because I think that's pretty amazing. Each of these electrons has traveled through both locations simultaneously and ends up on the other side. But it still ends up as a single particle. It left as a single particle, it arrives as a single particle because it's just left a single, a single dot on the other screen where that particle arrived. But somewhere in between it became a wave. It had to have become a wave because it's interfered with itself. Somehow it's gone through both paths at the same time. This is absolutely what happens, and our best explanation sorry, is that it's both. It's both a wave and a particle at the same time. And that is this idea of wave-particle duality. It says that all quantum objects... can have interference, just like a wave. Interference, and they all transfer energy in discrete amounts discrete amounts, meaning our quanta of energy. And so that's more of a particle sort of way of behaving because they're fixed sizes, so it looks like a single object. So that's our wave-particle duality. Um, there's a couple of problems there, and we'll see you in the next lesson.